across that crime. I want to go through the standards for the first responder challenge on April 13, 2013. All the proceeds will be split between the survivors and the widow's fund. The workout itself is box 361 and it's a 12 minute AMRAP where we're doing 9 burpee box jump overs, 9 pull ups, 9 kettlebell swings, and 9 ball slams. If you'd like to compete or support, go to firstresponderchallenge.com where you can sign up, buy a t-shirt, or compete in the event. And we just like to thank any of you out there that are supporting or competing in this event. Now let's go through the standards for the burpee box jump over. First, we will demonstrate one complete rep. Now let's break down the key judging points that we will be looking at while you're competing during the event. First, during the burpee, the hips and chest must touch the ground every time. As far as going over the box, both feet must touch every time. At no point in time are you allowed to use your hands. Now you can use your both feet by jumping on the box, or you can step over, as this. It does not matter if you choose to face the, burp, the box, or if you choose to do it to the side of the box. As long as you hit those standards, no hands, both feet, chest and hips to the ground every time, you will complete each rep. And that is the burpee box jump over. Now let's go through the standards for the pull-up. It's pretty basic, but we have two key points. The elbow joint must open at the bottom, and we must touch chest to bar every rep. Now let's demonstrate that move. Now if you choose, you can kip, butterfly, or do strict pull-ups. It does not matter as long as you hit those two points. And that is the standard for the pull-ups. Now let's go through the standard for the kettlebell swing. The most important judging point that we will be looking for is that the kettlebell itself crosses the plane of the shoulder joint and comes above the shoulder. When doing this movement, the arms can be bent. You can choose to bring it all the way top if you wish, but the most important point the judges will be looking for is that that kettlebell does cross the shoulder joint. If that is done, then you will complete a standard rep in the first responder challenge with the kettlebell swing. Now the last movement we have to review for the first responder challenge is the ball slam. The ball must start on the ground every time and come overhead and finish over top of the shoulder joint. As long as it passes over the shoulder, then it is one complete rep. If an athlete chooses, you can drop the ball from the top if you want. But that is it. As long as the ball crosses over the shoulder joint, it is one complete rep. And that is it for the ball slam for the first responder challenge. Alright guys, those are the standards for the first responder challenge. But I do want to remind you that we do have a fun and a competitive division. So if you choose to participate in the fun division, you will not be judged to those standards and you can scale the event. For the pull-ups, you can use bands if needed, the boxes can be lower, and you don't have to worry about the strict guidelines that we just reviewed. If you choose to participate in a competitive division, we will judge you strictly to those standards so that it's fair for all competitors and athletes. We ask you to support this. If you have any questions, post the comments underneath this video, and you can support by going to firstresponderchallenge.com and signing up to compete, buy a t-shirt, or even just show up that day to support the cause. All proceeds, once again, are being split between the widows and the survivors fund. Thank you guys for all your support and help. Hope to see you there that day.